There's a debate going on on the Asian internet. Should you make your Asian child work at the family restaurant growing up or not? Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's run the clip from TikTok as well as some commentary. If you ever see this happening, don't you dare call Child Protective Services. You order the food immediately. Don't hesitate, don't wait. You look at that menu, whatever you think looks best, you order it. Because I guarantee you it's going to be smashing, son. And the only reason he's taking the order is because he speaks the best English out there out of anybody. Now, peep the back. Now, what you need to take into account, all Asians working. Not one other ethnicity is out there. And that is very important to me, and that's a good thing to me. I don't want you to think that's a bad thing. Keep with your people. I don't really care. I know this food is about to hit because everybody know what they doing back there. No matter what you ordering, bro, it's going to... Ten minutes. It's on the way. And I'm guarantee you it's going to hit. Chicken wings, smashing. You can be like, damn, these shits is fried. How? Put it in a dipping sauce, bro. Oh man. Yo, I'm telling you, this <laughs> is actually pretty old school. This clip is hilarious. Actually, the corresponding commentary was also hilarious. What's going on here, Andrew? The kid's like 11. No, nah, it's so funny to hear people always like, oh, man, you know the Chinese food was going to hit when you saw the little kid working at the front or the kids doing the homework. Obviously, this is a meme, but it's also based in real life because there's still a lot of families, even Asian or not, but I think the Asian families, or at least the immigrant families do this the most. I mean, this is a hood Chinese takeout. Yeah. But, like, it could be in, like, a rural area as well. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to break it down for you guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. And you know what would taste good on some Chinese takeout, though? Small la sauce. Check it out. Still selling chefs and foodie alike. Uh, really enjoy it. I mean, I feel like I see this less nowadays, but I remember I went to a bodega in uh, Alphabet City just like four years ago, and there was a kid who was like 12, and he was like a, like a you know, like a Middle Eastern kid. He was like selling me all the gum and everything. Yeah, yeah. So it still happens from time to time. It's not just the Asian thing, but obviously the Asian kid at the Chinese restaurant is iconic. Iconic motif in life. I guess, I guess, David... Right off the bat, when people are debating, oh, this is, you should, uh, this is like child labor, oh, it's child services, let the child be a child, what are you doing? You know, like, that's the debate. A lot of people are saying, I get it that these Chinese restaurants are mom and pop, ran by one family, it, maybe it's the holiday season, they need help. Uh, the kid is probably the best at English out of everybody. You're right, yeah, he's probably the best at English, but he is also a kid. Should we let them be kids? I mean, what's your opinion? I mean, my general opinion is like that family's got to do whatever it takes to survive. But in terms of the impact on the kid, there was a lot of debate in the comments section because there were some restaurant kids who said it helped them. But there were some restaurant kids who also said that it was ultimately a traumatizing experience. Mm. So, I mean, the truth is, Andrew, the devil's in the details, right? It depends on what type of operation it is. You know, what kind of systems they run? What responsibilities is the kid given? What is the kid giving up? Mm. Like in terms of sacrifice to obviously contribute to the family, which is ultimately probably a good thing, though, right? Because the family is is usually immigrants. They're not highly educated. That's why they run like a hood takeout. Mm -hmm. They got they got to stick together. But yes, for sure, there's gonna be some pros and cons in terms of uh, potential negative impacts on the kid's psyche. But it can also teach them a lot of discipline. I think it really depends on how much they have to work there. I think if the kid, like from my friends who had to help out at their parents' businesses, like on the weekends, I think that's cool. Like expose them to math, addition, subtraction, doing the calculations, like at a young age. And, and things that are high stakes because it's the family's like fortune. Right? Yeah, yeah. Keep it within the family. I understand that. But yeah, if you make them work there full time, especially like when they have other things they need to do for their development, let's say they want to do sports and you're like, no, you got to work at the restaurant. For four hours after school, it's like, dang, like it's kind of taking over their life. And also you as a parent have to understand what am I going to teach my kid? What is my kid taking away? If we run a very messy kind of like dingy kitchen where like it's kind of a crazy like harebrained like kind of operation, yeah, it's going to be stressful on the kid. But if you run like a good you know, well-ran, well-oiled machine, then it's different, right? But you can also argue that if you run a really well-oiled machine, you probably wouldn't need your 10-year-old kid to be the cashier, too. Right. I, I'm assuming this clip is actually during the holiday season or during a weekend, because there's no way, like, the kid is working there during the week. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I guess <clears throat> the one thought that I had was, like, man... There are some people in 2023 that are almost having, like, a 1975, like, 1985, like, 
like 30 years ago type upbringing. You know what I mean? Like, it's still like you you think that this is going away and all the kids are like chasing clout with the broccoli cuts, you know, trying to be Gen Z. But it's like, nah, we have a cousin, Andrew, who grew up in rural Pennsylvania. And I feel like some of the things that he's saying or some of the, you know what I mean? Like some of the things that I heard about his upbringing, they reminded me of almost like California in the 1980s. Yeah. Like I'm saying the different regions of the country are like so throwback. You know what I mean? Depending yeah. on that yeah, environment, yeah. it could be so different. Um, anyway, let's get into the comment section. Somebody said, the way he ripped that receipt was enough, man. He is bona fide. Of course, other people saying, Lil Man is in the zone. Oh my goodness, I literally had a kid get up from their coloring book and come take my order. That low mean had to slap. Um, you know, it's funny because, Andrew, everybody's lauding this kid, right? Everybody's like, yo, man, this kid putting in work. But obviously, nobody would have actually put their kid through it or wish that they had his life, right? Yeah, or nobody wishes that... Like, no one says, like, yo, this kid is going to be very successful or cool when he grows up. I want to be his friend. They're just applauding that the kid is he's doing what he's told. Enough, right? He is responsible enough. He probably isn't making a lot of errors. He's probably not happy, though. Right? But you're right. Maybe not Not every moment of your life as a kid has to be happy. I don't think so. Right. Andrew, this got into a... Uh, this turned into a huge debate because when this got posted on Jackfruit, Andrew, there was... Uh, restaurant kids, some mm. kids were saying, yep, childhood trauma programming right there. He'll see it when he hits the middle age like the rest of us. Other people said, bro, what are you talking about? I started helping my mom out at the age of seven. I'm 35 now. I'm absolutely proud of what I did. And he said, yeah, you might be proud now, but watch, when you get older, you'll see that you are a people pleaser, acts of service. You'll realize that basically you um, have like a lot of trauma from those days where you were like not allowed to develop your personality organically. Mm. And then of course, other people are saying, oh, it's only traumatic for people who didn't make the most out of it. And then of course, uh, basically there was just like a lot of arguing back and forth. But isn't the truth, Andrew, that that guy could be right, but the other person who's saying that it was a great experience could also be right? Because they grew up in different families. Yeah, and it just depends on what you took from it, man. I, and it's so variable, you know? I had a friend whose parents owned a catering truck growing up. And I remember he would tell me stories when we were like in high school or junior high of how he was helping out on the, on the truck. <laughs> and I wanted to work on the truck with him. I said, yo, man, like, let me volunteer. Like, can you ask your mom so that I can work? Because I was like interested in food at the time and like cooking. And, and then he was like, no, trust me, dude, you don't want to do it. And then he asked his mom and his mom was like, yo, that's crazy. Have someone else's kid with us. Like, even right. though Andrew's a good kid, like, I don't want to be responsible for that. You know what I mean? Like that, that was... So I'm saying that I think I was going to learn something from that, even though, of course, that was not my life. That was his life, not my life. Yeah, the truth is, it's going to vary a lot on the restaurant, too. Because if you take a look at, like, uh, John M. Chu, the famous director, Andrew, his parents own a famous restaurant in the Bay Area that's, like, high-end. Yeah, shout-out to Larry Chu. Yeah, you know what I mean? Larry. Like, you're going to learn a lot from that system because you're, you're from the clientele, from the pings, from the networking you see your Yeah, because it's with. a nice restaurant, yeah, and you're going to meet nice clientele. You're going to meet successful people who eat there. Yeah, like bankers or tech people or something. Like, you you could learn something from them, too. Um, somebody just said, man, that was me at age nine. And somebody said, yep, um, basically... You know, we, this is like how Asians hustle and basically said this way. I'm waiting for the child labor comments, but we Asian, this is partially why Asian communities are so strong, great work ethic. And we learned early. One thing we are going to do for sure is hustle. So ultimately, I think a lot of people, Andrew, are proud of this in the sense that you don't really see, I mean, like this is the most, if you had to guess any race or culture, putting their kids to work like this. I guess you would guess that it would be Asian, right? Yeah, it'd be a high likeliness that it'd be Asian. But I think all immigrant groups do this to some level if they run a business. Obviously, Asians own a lot of businesses. It's true. Very enterprising people. If you look at the stats, the amount of businesses that are opened by Asian people is very high. No, it is tr pretty tremendous. We are actually. business owners. We own a business, it, technically. It's, it's <laughs> a, it is a culture that really loves, like, just... Enterprise. It, yeah, yeah, enterprise. Yeah, yeah. I don't they know. really Commerce. love business, man. They really love small business. They love big business, import, export. Uh, I don't know, man. It's just Asian for some reason. It's yeah. very mercantile. You know, um, I guess my short answer is I'm proud of this little kid. I do hope that he's not forced to do it forever. You know what I mean? Right. I I hope that he has choices. I think that helping out with your family a few times a week is great. Um, obviously, you know, I didn't have to grow up doing it. And our parents, like, didn't own, like, a really 
you know, I, I, for example, like if it's a poorly ran restaurant, like that could be stressful on the kids. So I understand that there is a situation where it is downside right. and it's negative. And you he know, also might not, if, and I, I'm not saying anything about this restaurant in question, but if the systems are bad, he's going to learn to navigate a bad system, which is not necessarily the best thing to learn from. Either, right. right. You know what it is? If he knows how to, if he runs that, you need to also expose him to better systems too. And I think that's the best way for people to learn is that they see both sides. Right. They see a messy system and they'll help out. That's the family. You should. And sometimes it still gets the job done. Yeah, it still like gets the, the job done. still turn. But hopefully he gets the opportunity to also expand his knowledge and help out at a better ran system of some type. Even like a Panda Express? Yeah, no, a- honestly, I mean, Panda Express is our amazing systems. Like, let's be honest, you know? So I guess overall... If you're a parent, just, you know, your kids are there to help the family, but within reason, you know, like they have other opportunities too, but yeah, help out shit. I mean, look at him. He's going to, he's going to know addition so fast, right? So fast. For sure. For sure. I mean, I would say the only risk is like if the parents love enterprise so much that they don't let the kid really explore their studies. Right, right, right. Because obviously the studying is going to allow him to step either into like higher level versions of like scaling up Chinese food in the future or just entering just like a high paid corporate Yeah, we don't know the situation. Maybe they were short staffed that day. Maybe a chef couldn't make it. They were super sick or whatever. I mean, obviously you got like, I think I saw like the... It looks like an older sister in the background, too, who looks only like 14 years old. He looks about 11. They're 14. So just the whole family is hustling. Hopefully, that's not all day, every day, right? But if this is just like during a busy time or a short staff time, it makes sense. Yeah, anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. It is a hilarious video. It's just like, man, just the way the kid looks with the glasses and he's all like chubby and round and stuff, man. Exposure to, kid, man. to dealing with customers and a small business early on is generally not bad, but of course, you just hope that these kids are getting their education and have options in life. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time with the Hot Pop Boys, we out. Peace.